you think, oh, wow, how could we stop, you know, more drug activity happening in rental properties? Well, let's make the landlord so responsible hey, that, idea, that huh? if they don't evict them, they're going to be a felon too. Welcome to the Rental Property Owner and Real Estate Investor Podcast, brought to you by the Rental Property Owner Association, providing benefits and services to real estate investors and rental property owners for over 45 years. With your host, Brian Hamrick from Hamrick Investment Group. Hello and welcome to episode number five. I want to start with a big thanks to Dave and Colin from the band Mustard Plug for letting us use their song, Mr. Smiley. I think it really sets the right tone for all the exciting and fun interviews that we have lined up for you. This happens to be our sixth episode, and our release pattern is designed to coincide with the RPOA Annual Conference, which is happening right here in Grand Rapids this Thursday through Sunday, February 25th through 28th, of 2016. So I believe it was JFK who said, ask not what the RPOA can do for you, but rather ask Clay Powell why the RPOA provides the best value for rental property owners and investors. So I might be paraphrasing there a bit, but the Rental Property Owners Association does provide a great value for owners and investors. And today I do sit down with Clay Powell to ask him how the RPOA can also help you become a more confident and successful rental property owner and real estate investor. Clay, why don't you go ahead and just get us started off by telling me uh, and, and our listeners who you are and what you do. Well, I'm the director here at the Rental Property Owners Association and uh, also a real estate investment association. Of course, my job is the ongoing management of the association, working with the board and the planning, making sure our services and benefits get provided to our members. But also a big chunk of my job is advocating for our members with local government <clears throat> and state government, and then also uh, doing lobbying at the state level and local level. Okay, so it sounds like you're a very busy it, we, person. Yeah, we wear a lot of hats in uh -huh. this particular job. Okay, so give me, uh, you know, give me a little bit of insight into who joins the RPOA and why. Well, we have a good mix of members. Uh, they can be real estate investors in general who are doing buy and holds and flips. Uh, land contracts, those kinds of things that you might traditionally think of as real estate investment and then uh, the traditional landlord. And we have landlords that are an individual only owns one property up to large management companies that own thousands of properties that are members. So we have a real diverse group, women, men, different cultural backgrounds, you name it, we have it as members and they're from all over the state of Michigan and even have members from other states and even other countries because when you're a member here, you get benefits and services that uh, will benefit you if you own property in the state of Michigan. Okay, so you, you don't necessarily have to even be in Michigan to be a member of the RPOA uh, in Michigan. Correct. In fact, a lot of those folks that live outside of the area even get a greater benefit because they're not tuned in and tied into what's going on in Michigan, they need even more help. For instance, if they need help doing an eviction or advice about a specific, specific real estate tactic they're doing, and is it, can they do it that way in this state as opposed to maybe the state of Ohio or something like that, we can connect them with someone that can get them that, that kind of an answer. Okay. So um, what, what's, what, what is the primary function of the RPOA? I mean, is it connecting people with, with the information they need, or, or is it a bigger thing than that? Well, uh, traditionally, we were a lobbying organization, which was generally fighting bad laws uh, that weren't good for real estate investors and landlords in general. Uh, and then a, a growth out of that was benefits and services. You got landlord just said, you know, we've got some forms you could use. Uh, why don't we get together and come up with the best form and we'll make those available to our other members or other, other landlords and other investors. And then we thought about, well, why don't we, we all do some kind of tenant screening went and we put together services for tenant screening. So we got credit reports and those kinds of things. And we've traditionally had those kind of benefits throughout the years. And we even had a health plan at one point. Um, but with Obamacare and those kind of things, it's not quite as beneficial anymore. Um, but beyond the lobbying and the services, the networking is another big piece of that. Uh, we offer different opportunities for folks to get together and talk about their business, help each other in you know, solving problems, uh, coming up with new creative strategies and ideas and marketing what they're doing and finding uh, services such as plumbers and, and handyman and those kind of individuals. Um, but beyond that, we do an awful lot of training. We have 18 courses plus. 
uh, that, you know, varying from how to do an eviction, how to buy your first rental property, how to do advanced investment analysis. So we have a wide variety of courses, many of which are also beneficial to licensed real estate folks because they can get uh, continuing education credits. Okay. Uh, and when, when you say beneficial to licensed real estate folks, how, what exactly do you mean? Well, the the first and easiest thing to say is that they get credit hours. For, they have to have continuing education to keep your license in the state of Michigan. And almost all of our courses have two or more credit hours uh, that you can get. So as you're looking for courses out there to take, if you're involved with investors or rental property owners in some way, shaping for, uh, or shape, shape or form, getting that kind of training specific to the industry is a whole lot better than taking a course, for instance, that might be talking about riparian rights or something like that, that which you don't deal with at all. So mm -hmm. uh, it's very focused. And if you want to deal with investors and you're going to be a real estate agent, wouldn't it be great to understand how that business works? Right. Okay. Yeah. And, and real estate agents, uh, they need a certain amount of credits every year. Is that correct? And right. They can get those. Yes, the RPO they do. They, they need six hours every year, and then eighteen every so you know every three years they, in order to keep their license. So, uh, and they can get legal credits to us as well. M many of our courses also provide those legal hours that they need. But you know, in addition to getting those kind of credits, real estate investors can tie into that investor network, build a business. Uh, from our members and you know attract members to our business, it, it, we, we consider it one big huge happy family of investors here, uh, including all real estate agents. Uh, they can get involved in either way, taking benefit from the members and then they offer services to our members. So it's it's a really happy marriage. Let's take it from the perspective of a newbie investor, someone who's just coming in and wants to get started investing. Uh, why would they come to the RPOA and what would they find? Well, the first thing that we would do is say, you know, ask them what they're looking to do. Are they looking to buy and hold, to be in the real estate investment in general of some sort doing flipping? We would try to put them or match them up with someone within the industry that's a member already. Uh, they might be able to attend one of our functions, such as our, such as our Friday morning breakfast meeting that we do. Every Friday except the holidays, there will be individuals there. We might specifically point out to them, this person, that's their business. This is their forte. You might want to connect with that person. Um, build a relationship with them, get to know them a little bit. Um, you might want to connect with our attorney that we have, uh, which can answer questions free of charge for the first few times. And those short, quick questions about how do you know where do I go next? What business structure do I need? Those kinds of things. We could tie you into an accountant that's familiar with the business. You could ask questions free of charge as well. Uh, and then we have lots of forms. Once you decide what it is you're going to do how you're going to go about doing it. Uh, if you're a real estate investment, you need land contracts. Well, we have land contracts. You don't have to worry about going out and building your own land contract. We have one you can start with. So it gives you a place to get started with those forms. If you're um, going to be a buy and hold expert, landlord type person, we have basically every form you can think of. We've been doing those for years. Uh, we've been around since 1968. So almost all of our forms have been tried and tested in the courts in and out. So, And, and they've been uh, updated since 1968. <laughs> uh, they're yeah. updated continuously, which is another real bonus. Uh, some of the other forms you find online, either one aren't legal with, for use in the state of Michigan, even though they might say they are. So you have to be aware of that. Uh, so that's it kind of gives you a peace of mind, if you will. If you get started in the business, you can use getting all the forms from us is going to prevent you from having to worry about doing the wrong thing in that direction. Yeah, yeah and that's, that's an important point, point because there's a, lot, a trend right now where people think they can just get whatever they need for free online. And what, what is the pitfall of thinking that way? Well, you know, we have obviously have a lot of things online as well, but we're specific to Michigan. So we try to ensure everything that we do is specific to the Michigan law. So we're not telling you something that's not going to work in Michigan. We're not going to provide you a form that's not going to work in Michigan. So that's a real head, you know, head start that way. Uh, but when we connect you with someone locally or even in the region or someone else in the state on how to do a particular type of investment activity, they're going to know what can be done, you know, how it can be done, what can't be done. Uh, and give you a heads up on the local market, the state market, whatever the market is within the area you're, you're thinking about investing in. You know, you might have heard when you were living in a, another state, maybe Oregon or someplace like that, hey, this is the greatest real estate investment strategy there is. You come to Michigan, 
there might be several investors to say, you know, that would have been great if you'd have been here two years ago, but now it's not. So it really is a benefit to get you started in the right way uh, and not get misinformed or get information from other people online, which might send you down the wrong path. Right. So the, uh, the, the forms and, and the information you have to offer are tried and true. They're tested. They're updated continuously and uh, they're available to members. Correct. And, you know, members can suggest forms and we're all about that. We have a specific committee then that gets together, would review that request and say, hey, you know, that's a great idea. Why don't we make that, that form available? We put it together with investors. And then we hand it off to the attorney to review it to make sure we didn't do anything we shouldn't do, uh, make sure everything's legal. And, and then we make it available either free online, generally speaking, usually for members. Everything's free uh, that way, so you don't have to pay for it uh, for most of our forms online. Uh, and then it'll be updated as things need to be updated. And if members say, you know, hey, I like that form, but why don't you do this with it? Well, then we'll consider modifying it in the future. So that's another thing you don't get with other online forms. You get what they got. You don't like it, well, you know, tough. So, mm -hmm. Okay, and um, let's talk about the next type of, of uh, RPOA member. I mean, we've, we've got the newbies who would come to get the, the beginning information. What about people who already own rental property and are managing those properties themselves? Well, they have varying different degrees, degrees of need. And usually information is a big piece of that. They want to know what's going on out there. They want to stay in tune with what's happening, especially in the government. Uh, we're the only organization statewide that pays attention to what's going on at the state house when it comes to our specific niche, being real estate investors and landlords. You've got the realtors out there cause, you know, worrying about what's going on with the realtor community and a little bit with real estate. But when you're talking specifically about what's happening with with rental property or with investment strategies, uh, like flipping and wholesaling and those kind of things, we're the only group out there looking for you. So we're getting feedback from those members who are experienced and to find out what their needs are, what they would think would be more helpful uh, in their business. And we're trying to promote that at the state level and at the local level, as the case may be. And when there is legislation that either comes out of the state level or the local level, uh, we're able to, that may be negatively uh, impacting the industry, could potentially negatively impact the industry. We're right there on top of it right away. Often, to be honest with you, we can kill it right out of the gate, which is really wonderful. We build a lot of good relationships with state legislators over the year. We have a great lobbying firm in Lansing. Uh, so we deal with that stuff quickly. Other benefits for advanced investors, obviously the opportunity to network with other other folks. We have a group that's a millionaire mastermind club. Once you've done a lot of deals and it's a smaller group, you can get involved with that group and work with those individuals. And I think uh, maybe Brian, you've been involved with that group. For, I am a member of the so, millionaire so, mastermind group. You know, yes. Maybe you could let them know a little bit what, what those folks are doing now. Yeah, well, I plan on uh, interviewing every single one of those uh, uh, masterminds in our group eventually. But uh, yeah, it's a great format for networking, sharing ideas, and talking about what works and what doesn't work. And, and also, uh, you know, we pay a lot of attention to just the state of the economy, what's going on here in West Michigan, and, um, you know, how we can benefit from it or perhaps how, what we should avoid so mm -hmm. that we uh, don't get into trouble. Right. And uh, also from those same groups, we get feedback here uh, at the RPOA about the kind of training that we need. And no, no one's ever done with their education. So when you talk to the advanced investor, the guy that's been in it for a long time, regardless of what he's doing, they've got something that they may want to know more about. Uh, and that might be, you know, what do I do when I get to the end of my career and I want to off, you know, get out of this and I want to hand it off to my family? You know, how can I best do that? Well, we have courses about how to do that. Or how do I protect all these assets now that I've got them built up? What's the best way to do that? Well, it's great to know some of those things right up front when you get started, uh, but usually you don't get motivated to think about those things until you get a little further down the road. So we build classes for asset protection, uh, for you know how to get out of the business in the most profitable way, how to hand it off to your family to, to so that they can, you can you don't pay as much taxes and those kind of things, and then as well as some advanced analysis classes. Uh, so if you want to take it for the next level, let's say you've been own, owning the ones and twosies for several years, and now you say you know I'd love to own that thirty unit building. How do I make that happen? It's 
kind of scary for me or it's bigger money. I, I hear that's a uh, fantastic you know, course. It is a fantastic course. <laughs> and uh, we know we have a lot of good trainers. Uh, and you know, as you know, Brian, you're, you're one of the trainers for one of those courses. But you know, we've, most of our, edu- most of our education is provided by professionals in the field. So we have a couple of attorneys that teach us our courses. We have uh, advanced brokers, landlords, experienced investors teaching all of our other courses. I teach a few, um, but where I can, I try to, you know, try to find other individuals and professionals in the field that know the stuff inside and out in the state of Michigan. So you're getting the firsthand best knowledge you can. So there's a lot of expertise offered through the RPOA. Mm-hmm. There is. And some members uh, over the years have said, you know, I always be a member of the RPOA because I like the magazine, the Michigan Landlord Magazine that I get every month because it has good information in it. I need to stay on top of that kind of stuff. Uh, and I want to be networking with all these other individuals that are like-minded like me who are doing business in the area that I'm in. So they're never going away. And they also support the idea of protecting their business. And some of them have actually said that the RPA is insurance for them, meaning that if one bad thing happened at the state house <laughs> and created a law that was going to cost them several thousand dollars more a year, uh, it could put them out of business. So it, you know, the RPOA membership and supporting it lobbying right there is, is, is a good insurance program. Let's let's talk about that a little bit more because I'd like to get specific as to some of the laws that may have been passed sure. and some of the bullets we've dodged as investors uh, that the RPOA has been instrumental in in uh, preventing it from happening. Sure. Well, you know, there, there's the crazy ones, and then there's not the ones that sound like, well, you know, maybe that's not as bad as you, you, you they think it might be. But, you know, some of the crazy ones that have come across our path are making a landlord responsible for a felony that's committed in their unit, making it a felony for a landlord to knowingly allow this person to live there after they've discovered that they, you know, that that was someone who's committed a felony or something so, like so that. So someone is selling drugs, for example. Right. So somebody's selling drug at a unit. And, and these sometimes these types of things are well-intentioned. You think, oh, wow, how could we stop? you know, more drug activity happening in rental properties. Well, let's make the landlord so responsible hey, that idea, that huh? if they don't evict them, they're <laughs> going to be a felon too. Well, you know, those are the kind of things like, okay, we understand the intent, but that's crazy, right? Mm-hmm. We just shouldn't be responsible for something like that. Other things that aren't quite so crazy, um, but still could be very onerous on your business is a lot of the lead laws that have come out. And we all say, okay, but there are a lot of lead rules in the state of Michigan. There's a lot of federal uh, lead laws that we have to follow. Well, there would have been a lot more hadn't we been there. And one of the ones that keeps coming up again and again, and it, and it, and it hasn't gone away yet, is that they want you to do a lead inspection at every single turn of your rental unit, which essentially means that once the tenant leaves, before you can put someone else in the property, you have to bring in a, a, a professional to come in, test for lead hazards, remediate any lead hazards they may find. Uh, but even if they don't find anything, you've already spent a bunch of money looking for something that's probably not there. Uh, it's always been our contention. You know, we have housing codes. We get inspected at you know two. Th- four, six, how many every years we get inspected on a regular basis. If you maintain your properties, you're probably not going to have lead hazards. Why are you going to force us to do this kind of costly uh, work? And we have to fight that on an ongoing basis. Well, what kind of costs are we talking to? I mean, let's, let's, break, let's make that practical. I mean, what, what is a owner of a rental property going to have to pay every time they turn a, a unit or turn their house well, or a unit to have a... First, a it's going to depend on how large the unit is, but for a traditional two two bedroom three bedroom home you're probably talking 500 or more to do the kind of lead testing uh, just for the testing just and for then the if they testing find anything you have to remediate it right and that exactly. can be in the tens of thousands yeah. of dollars you know and and the right and we should we're probably taking care of all those things anyway uh, what you might find is that your tenant has not informed you of their bad housekeeping skills which have led to an increase in lead levels and those types of things. So it's, it's an issue with a previous tenant or th- with an existing tenant. So um, the costs are substantial. And, you know, having someone come into your unit every time you turn a unit, it just adds to more more time to the turnover. 
and uh, you know turnovers are already expensive. Well, ultimately, it is, so. it's going to drive up rental rates as well yeah, because yeah, the landlord exactly. should be passing that cost on to the the person who's. And, be and you hit a part you hit upon one of our better arguments that mm-hmm. we've had uh, uh, to being opposed to those kind of things. And not only is it inconvenience and expensive, it ultimately all those costs are passed on to the to the tenants in some way, shape, or form. Uh, so it just increases the cost of housing. And do you want to do that? In the, in the, and unfortunately, in that particular circumstance, that cost of that housing typically ends up being uh, put upon the folks who can least afford it. Right. Exactly. In, in the older neighborhoods where lead is really a, a, more of a problem. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, so let's uh, let's get back to the RPOA and the benefits that people get. I mean, we've talked about the newbie investor, the, the current owners. What about business owners who want to... Uh, um, uh, network and, and attract the audience that you have to offer? Well, we have what we call associate members. So if you happen to be the plumber or the hardware store or the attorney or the real estate broker or someone like that, and you want to engage with someone who's involved specifically in that industry, uh, there's a, multiple ways you can, one, get involved with the networking groups I've already talked to you about, attending the meetings, but you have a lot of advertising opportunities through the magazine, through our website. Uh, on, on our social media page. You can sponsor various things. You can even sponsor the recordings you're hearing today. Uh, so um, a lot of different opportunities, a way for them to engage. Excellent. And, and every uh, year we do an annual conference. So can you talk about our upcoming annual conference? Sure. We've got a great conference this year coming up. Our headline speaker is going to be Lou Brown. Many people in the real estate investment world have heard about Lou Brown. He's been on the circuit for a lot of a lot of years. Uh, he knows just about everything. They often call it the whole enchilada of real estate investment. So we're excited to have Lou back. He'll be a second time here. It's been quite a while since he's been here. So there'll uh, be a lot of folks out there. I haven't seen him yet and we encourage you to come. It's a three-day event, February February 25th through the 27th. It's a DeVos place, downtown Grand Rapids. Uh, lots of other ongoing breakout sessions throughout those course, the course of the events. And we have usually 30, 35 exhibitors at the event offering their services and products. Uh, some of them are associate members, some of them from out further away uh, coming in with their wear. And Home Depot will be there talking about all their discounts they provide to our members, also the, the rebate they provide to our members. You know, all of our members get a 2% rebate from Home Depot for everything they buy, and that's on top wow, that can really of, add of their discount. So if you're doing a lot of rehabbing, a lot of flips and those kind of things can make a huge difference to your bottom line. Just just by being a member, I mean, I have one member tell me alone, he says, I can't I can't afford not to be a member of the RPOA. You I know, mean, we haven't even talked about the discounts yet, but that's just the start with Home Depot. Uh, you know, they get four times that check back from the small amount of work they do from the Home Depot every year mm-hmm. uh, just by being a member of the RPOA. And on top of that, they get uh, Republic Waste Services, which saves them thousands of dollars a year. Uh, they get other discounts from other members, uh, snow plowing and other services they get from Riley's Age Hardware and discounts more than pays for their membership. And basically they're saying, you know, we can't afford not to be a member. So. That's right. exciting for us, and we keep looking for those kind of things, uh, and, and adding more to the list. Well, and um, uh, so the the discounts are, are great. What's the discount on the conference? Uh, the discount is huge. It's zero. <laughs> it's, <laughs> for everybody. zero it's zero free for everybody. Uh, you can't get any better than that. Uh, we so, like so you can attend a three day <laughs> conference, listen to national speakers. For zero amount of money. For a zero amount of money. So you can't get any better deal than that. And um, we don't want dollars to discourage someone from coming and learning some new technique that they need to learn, get excited about the industry, get involved in the industry, and connect with other people. In fact, all of our other networking events are free as well. So unless you buy a breakfast at the Friday morning breakfast meeting, it's no cost to you. If you go to the meetup group, which is the Michigan Real Estate Investor Club of West Michigan, you're not going to pay for anything unless you buy a cup of coffee or a drink or something like that. So we like to make those opportunities available to everybody, um, including you know non-members, because non-members ultimately see the value in the association and join. So we want to encourage people to get involved. We want to get a good education. Be successful. Everybody's successful. It's great for everybody. They can support the lobbying that we've talked about uh, once you become successful. So it's, it's a win-win all the way around. Right. And so how does someone who's not a member uh, become a member? What, what would they do? Where would they go? The address is rpoaonline.org. 
So don't get confused and say .com, it's .org. We're a not-for-profit uh, association here in Michigan. So we chose several years ago to go with the .org. So it's rpoaonline.org. Uh, and <clears throat> once you go there, you just click join now and it'll take you to a page which talks about various different membership levels. The basic level being a silver membership. Gets you just about everything except a hard copy of the magazine and in office credit reporting service. Uh, it costs you 100 extra $150 a year to have the in office credit reporting service. You can buy that. Uh, you can go to the gold membership, which gets you the hard copy of the magazine for $249. Uh, and, or you can go to the platinum level membership, which basically gets you everything I just mentioned, including, including the in office credit reporting service if you pass the, the inspection. Uh, but you also get to come to almost all of our training programs we've talked about today for free. So that's a real bonus. So if you've got uh, a staff, especially that has real estate license and they need to take training on an ongoing basis, they can take most of their continuing education for free. So that's, that's a real bonus. Once again, some of those larger companies, property management companies, uh, say they can't afford not to be a member because that really helps uh, pay for their continuing education training. Yeah, and not to mention the discounts they get at different businesses, including right. Home Depot, more than cover the cost of their uh, their membership. Exactly, the property management company is you know they're they've got lots of owners, so you, you don't have to be an owner to get the discount, and you can be a property management company to get the discount for all of your owners that you're doing work for. That's fantastic. Well, that that's um that's a lot of great information about the RPOA. Uh, thank you very much, Clay. Hey, for, appreciate it. For really do taking the time to talk about the RPOA and. And also for sponsoring this podcast. You know, I really appreciate that. Well, I thank you, Brian, for doing them for us. It's wonderful. You're a volunteer. And pretty much the RPOA is here because of volunteers. And we can't say enough about all their support. And without their help, I, it would be a real challenge. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Thanks. You've been listening to the Rental Property Owner and Real Estate Investor Podcast, brought to you by the Rental Property Owner Association. You can find out more at rpoaonline.org. If you enjoyed this podcast, please go to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and review. 